What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is Preview Picks, the weekly show where I go over the comic books coming out on Wednesday, give you an idea what they're all about, and whether you should talk to your shop about them or not. So make sure you subscribe to get one of these every Monday. Also, make sure you subscribe to enter to win the free copy of Batman White Knight number one, signed by Sean Gordon Murphy. The drawings can be October 31st, so make sure that you subscribe and comment to make sure that you're entered for that. But let's start off with talking about Black Panther number 166. So this is the first issue in the Marvel Legends. Legacy storyline, and if we take a look at Marvel Legacy number one, we see that there are some huge plans for Black Panther in the future, but we still need to get there. So coming off the tale of political intrigue that really started off Ta-Nehisi Coates' run on Black Panther, this is seeing the return of the villain Claw, and hopefully it's going to develop into something a little bit more acceptable for a mainstream audience. It started off strong when Ta-Nehisi Coates started writing it, so I'm hoping that it's going to come back to form in the near future. We also have Wonder Woman number three, which is bringing on James Robinson as the writer. You know, he wrote the previous two issue, The Children of the Gods, where Diana is basically taking over for her brother, her half-brother, Hercules. And we have this whole plot with Darkseid and Grail, and there's a lot of really cool stuff that's going to be happening in this. It's definitely a book that I'm going to be checking out just because I want to see where this story develops, and anything involving Darkseid right now is definitely something that I want to be reading about. Then we get to talk about All New Wolverine number 26 by Tom Taylor. So this is continuing the Orphans of X storyline, which sees Laura Kinney's X-23 teaming up with Dokken. And this is really, you know, like... It's it's interesting because Tom Taylor has done a really good job with All New Wolverine, but it's the the book itself is really up in the air ever since the reintroduction of the old Wolverine who's broken out of adamantium. And there's been insinuation that issue number 30 is going to be the last book of this storyline, so it's really kind of got me in a kind of tumultuous and turmoil-based situation right now. It's like I want to see Laura continue to be a great Wolverine, but I really am intrigued by what might be happening at Marvel. So uh, All New Wolverine number 20. 26. Definitely a good book. Definitely something that I would be looking for if I was on the shelf. However, you're probably going to want to start at the beginning if you really want to get into Laura's title. Then there's a book that I haven't really read at all, and that's Deadly Class number 31, but I love Rick Remender's writing, and it's something that I've been sleeping on for so long. Between this and Low, there's just so many books that I have to catch up on from him. So Deadly Class number 31, if you're interested in anything by Rick Remender, this is something that you should have been picking up a while ago, and something that I'm probably going to go back in like a hardcover or a few trade paperbacks to make sure that I get, uh, you know, my full dose of Rick Remender <laughs> titles. You know, Seven to Eternity has been fantastic. I love Tokyo Ghost. So hopping on Deadly Class and Low, those are things that I really need to do. Of course, sticking with independent titles, we can talk about Renato Jones number four. So Renato Jones and the 1%, uh, the Freelancer, season two, issue four of five, is kind of taking place right now. And what I've found is that it is just visceral, gonzo fun. It's it's action, it's political, It's there's all kinds of different stuff, and it's just really about, you know... It's about a violent release in almost every respect. And I really appreciate what Kara Andrews has been doing with this. The, the art style of his is very cool. You might remember him from Iron Fist. Uh, but he has just done a fantastic job with this book. And it's something that it's it's not even a guilty pleasure. It's something that I really enjoy. And it's been that way ever since he released Renato Jones and the 1% number one back over a year ago. So definitely a recommendation for me. Definitely something that I'm going to be picking up this Wednesday. Another book I'm going to be picking up this Wednesday is Amazing Spider-Man number 790. So with last issue 789, we actually see kind of like a downtrodden Peter Parker sleeping on Bobby Morse's couch and evidently making out with her after they go out for a night of superheroing. So I'm interested to see where Dan Slott really pushes this. You know, I, I don't necessarily need, uh, you know, mopey Peter Parker being poor and stuff like that, but I do want to see some character progression. This is a man that has had everything. You know, he was a capital of industry, you know, captain of industry. And, uh, you know, he had he had everything, and now it's been taken away from him. And I want to see what he kind of does to rebound on that. And I don't want it to be... I want to see Dan Slott write a good story. Like, I was a really huge fan of Superior Spider-Man. I thought that it was fantastic and how creative it was when he implemented it. And it's just one of those things where I want to see him tell a good story, and I feel like he hasn't done that in quite some time. So this is really a chance for, for people that are Spider-Man fans to get back into a little bit more classic Spider-Man, but not necessarily classic Spider-Man. So I, I'm really excited for where this goes. Really hopeful, but I am managing my expectations.
One of the things I don't feel I need to manage my expectations about, though, is metal. And Flash number 33 is starting a four-part metal crossover where we're going to see Flash, uh, Justice League, Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns, and then another Justice League issue taking on the Dark Knights. So you've got Red Death versus the Flash. You've got Dawnbreaker versus Hal Jordan. You've got the Merciless versus Wonder Woman. You've got all this kind of stuff happening, and it looks like it's going to be just this gigantic spectacle of awesomeness. So I'm really excited to see where this goes and how this really kind of unfolds it looks like it's going to be a really excellent adventure that ties into the overall metal storyline. But if we're basing it off, say, like the last series, the last four-parter that covered across Suicide Squad, Green Air, and all that kind of stuff, that means that this is going to be happening in a very small point in time in between probably two metal stories. So like between Metal 4 and Metal 5, something along those lines, or between Metal 3 and Metal 4. So it's the timeline's going to get a little foggy on this one, but it's not like that isn't the case with all DC events. Then we're going to hop over to Valiant, where I've got Bloodshot Salvation number two. I wasn't super enamored with the first issue, but I really enjoyed it overall. It is my kind of gateway into Valiant, other than Exo Manowar. So I'm really excited to see where Jeff Lemire can kind of take this in issue number two. Uh, it's a really interesting kind of story, so it's definitely something that I'm looking to pick up, but I can't quite recommend it just yet for everyone. However, a book that I can recommend for everyone is Action Comics 990, which continues the Oz effect. So a lot of people have been feeling that this is just maybe a touch lackluster, just comparatively, you know, it feels like it's perhaps a little bit drawn out. And then due to the actual actions with Manchester Black in the Superman title, it feels like Jonathan Kent is becoming kind of a plot device. You know, he's kind of a ploy. He's a very easy outlet in order to kind of create conflict amongst Superman and his family and, and you know, really kind of bring out this different emotional side of Superman. So seeing Jor-El kind of take Jonathan Kent and kind of convert him is something that a lot of people are feeling a little bit tired of. I'm really excited to see where the storyline goes because it does play a huge part in, you know, DC's rebirth overall. And I really want to see how Jor-El became the person that he is today and what kind of influence Dr. Manhattan had on him. I just... I'm, I'm starting to think that I might not see that in this one, you know, like in this series. And that's really kind of disheartening. So Action Comics 990 is still a must-buy for a lot of people that are following DC Rebirth. But we're starting to temper our expectations just a little bit. Another book that I'm tempering my expectations a bit on is Exo Man of War number 8. I know that they're about to make a creative change on this title, and overall the first one through seven issues have been absolutely phenomenal. They are something that I, I, I put it on my pull list at issue number two because it's just been fantastic. I love the premium kind of format. I love the art style of Clayton Crane. Matt Kinton's been doing a great job with Eric of Earth. And, you know, the travels of this, you know, farmer that's kind of been abandoned by his planet and to Emperor has been fantastic. So I'm really excited to see where everything goes from there. However, you know, I, I, I'm not sure where it goes, but that's part of the fun. You know, I don't have any expectations for this character because I'm so fresh and so new to this. So Exo Manowar has been a fantastic book, probably one of the best from Valiant. Definitely something that you should be picking up. Go back to number one if you have the opportunity, pick up the trade paperback, do whatever it is. Exo Manowar, super fun title. Then there is another super fun title, and that's Detective Comics 967, which is continuing the Lonely Place of Living storyline, which is really revolving around Tim Drake and his adventures with Tim Drake, Batman from the future, from Titans Tomorrow. So future Tim Drake is kind of cold-blooded, methodical. You know, he's a killer. He's redeeming the weapon that was used to kill Bruce Wayne's parents uh, by killing criminals with it. And we see that with Anarchy in the last issue. So it's just a great story. If, if we're talking about themes related to Oz and Oz's prison, Detective Comics 967 is a must-buy and probably is playing a little bit bigger role in this overall universe, or at least providing a little bit better story than Action Comics 990 is right now with the Oz effect. So De Detective, definitely a recommendation for me. Definitely something you should be picking up on Wednesday. Another book I am really enjoying is Punisher the Platoon, which is by Garth Ennis, and this is just a really great story about Frank Castle's first tour in Vietnam. You know, his first jumping out into the fray. You know, before he was really a battle-hardened person, before he came back and had the devastation happen to his family, this is the story of Frank Castle and his endeavors overseas. And I'm really excited about where this is going to go. The first issue set up everything up fantastically. So Punisher the Platoon, definitely going to be a great miniseries coming out of Marvel. Then we have time for two brand new number ones, and the first one is from Valiant, and it's Eternity number one. It's part of a four-part series that's written by Matt Kent, and this is dealing with kind of a descendant of Divinity. So Divinity is... <laughs> Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on in the Valiant universe, but Eternity Number 1 looks to be a pretty fantastical and kind of otherworldly romp 
in, in this kind of valiant universe. So I'm really excited to see where that goes and how kind of like crazy and far out into the into space and into nothingness and into the ether they can really go with this particular character. It's it's kind of exciting in that respect. But the big number one that's coming out is Batman the Merciless number one. So with Batman the Merciless number one, we see the confrontation between Batman and Wonder Woman, and it's ah oh man, it's this is going to be so good. I'm I'm so excited for for where this is. The art on it looks fantastic. The storyline, you know, when we're talking about Wonder Woman and Batman becomes the god of war, so that means he's got to take on Ares, and there's all kinds of amazing stuff that should be going down in this book, and I can't wait to see it. Overall, Batman the Dark Knights tie-ins, where we're getting the Red Death, Murder Machine, Dawnbreaker, Drowned, now the Merciless, Devastator, the Batman Who Laughs, these are all probably my favorite parts of the entire DC Metal continuity here. It's just so cool to be seeing these things kind of unravel, and it gives us so many possibilities for where we can tell other stories inside the DC Universe. So highly recommend for me, definitely a must-buy. But those are what I'm picking up on Wednesday. I want to know what you guys are going to be grabbing too, so hit me up in the comments down below so you can tell me what uh, might be on my radar or might not be on my radar that I should be picking up. Also remember, subscribe to get entered into the contest for you know the giveaway in order to pick up that signed copy of Batman White Knight number one. Uh, you know, So comment and uh, subscribe for that. Don't forget to subscribe if you uh, want to see more news reviews and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.